Now, to close the show, we're heading to Wellington, uh, where she is waiting for us outside a glamorous function. Uh, your, your new Vice President for Federated Farm is Karen Williams and joins us on the phone now. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? Good evening, Sarah. I'm very good, thank you. Good. I have to firstly say on behalf of all of us, congratulations on the promotion. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's an exciting time. And, uh, yeah, both Andrew and I are pretty pretty keen to get to get busy quickly and, and put our mark on things. Yeah, certainly we uh, have a countdown to a very important election and I know you won't be uh, taking your foot off the pedal. What are some of those massive uh, election wishes that you've got uh, this year? Yeah, well, obviously, um, you know, we'll work closely with the parties um, and, and talk about our issues and, and opportunities for agriculture and, and what we can bring to, um, you know, every farmer at home on their farm and deliver in that space. But obviously water's a massive one um, and, you know, we'll continue sort of pushing the line of, you know, working locally. Um, you know, we strongly believe broad brushed rules um, can can lead to all sorts of unintended co- consequences. So we're very keen to support catchment-based approach um, and then, I guess, making that more specific um, on, with your own farm plan. Um, and that catchment enables the catchment um, approach enables you to understand what your limitations or your pro- um, problems are, as opposed to just sort of assuming it's um, you know it's nitrogen, it's sediment, whatever it might be. You can tailor that, and then you can tailor obviously your response to that. Um, yeah, climate obviously climate change massive um, massive for the for us all going forward. Um, we have the Hewaka Ikanoa. Um, a group that has formed, which is the industry and uh, government partnership to to address uh, reducing agricultural emissions. And there's a, a massive body of work um, kicked off with that already, um, with eight different work streams looking at things like sequestration, emissions pricing, emissions reporting. Um, there's a Māori uh, work stream as well. So a lot of work going in there. Um, and that is very much so, mind, you know, it's, we not necessarily going into the emissions trading scheme, but we're going to find ways and means and solutions um, so that we don't have to do that and we can reduce our emissions, um, transition to carbon zero, but still have really viable farming systems. So, mm. yeah, a lot of a lot of work going on there. Um, and trade, obviously, you know, pushing back against protectionism and you know wanting to work towards enhancing free trade agreements and and getting our quality product um, out around the world. Mm. Now, you're obviously not new to this uh, role, Karen, being the arable chair prior to this, but also, too, not new to getting all parties around the table to collaborate towards a bigger mission with, of course, the world's first eradication of pea weevil under your watch. But, Karen, my question to you is, as Federated Farmers has struggled to be at every table uh, in a lot of these collaborative discussions. What will you do in your role as Vice President uh, to ensure that Fed's voices are heard? Yeah, I guess there's sort of two aspects to that. Um, And that is, yeah, the first part, I guess, is building the right relationships. And it's really critical to to build those strong relationships in what we call peacetime. So before there's an issue, um, you know, well, you know, probably a lot of people think Wellington's full of people having coffee. But, you know, having coffee with someone and talking about those issues and, and building that relationship has been very easy to pick up the phone when when a, a, a challenge arises. So we'll continue to do that. And our board, you know, is very strong in that in that regard, as well as our CE, Terry Copeland, and, and staff um, are working on, on that so that we can, you know, start to cement relationships and then deal with them. The, the other part to it, though, is we physically can't be in every room um, around the country with the, 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 the enormity of things that are going on, whether it's at a national level, um, regional or local level. So we, we need to work smart. I want us to work smarter, team ag, that is, mm. and see, you know, between our levy bodies and ourselves and our other industry stakeholders, how we can um, align uh, on certain issues. We're never going to agree necessarily on everything. But align on that and, and spend the, the farmer dollar or the farmer resource very, very wisely. So, um, yeah, that's something we're pretty keen on, on doing too. Do you have uh, a couple of top one, two or three things that you would really like to achieve in your tenor? I want to grow membership. That's, that's really important to me. Um, 
you know, we there's there's a lot of work gets done on behalf of farmers, and I don't think that's greatly um, understood. And that's no one's particular fault. It's just some of the the grunty policy work that goes on. Um, you know, people are just busy in their day, and they don't want to know the ins and outs of that. But we're sort of exploring as a as a as a board how we can maybe um, embrace some different campaigns where we see delivery on on things that aren't necessarily about policy, such as um, improved telecommunications, um, which I think, you know, during COVID lockdown, that sort of resonated with all of us that live rurally, whether we're farmers or not. I know for myself, trying to stay on Zoom calls along with three school-age children, all trying to do their schooling on Zoom, and, you know, we could have one at a time was pretty much where it's at. And certainly when we look at, you know, the environmental initiatives and reporting and monitoring of... of um, Let's say our, our emissions, you know, we need that rural connectivity so we can do it in the paddock and be more effective. So, yeah, really keen to, to embrace some of those those campaigns. Uh, yeah, I want us to be the respected voice of farming and, and be at the tables. We have had instances um, in, in the last year or so where we have been, the doors have been closed to us. Um, so we need to work hard to get back in there and, you know, continue to to share the farmer voice. Um, but we also need to be really open-minded um, to the possibilities of change and, and smarter ways of doing things. And I think, you know, our membership is up for that. But it's very much um, that engagement needs to include the why. Why change? Why do we need to do this differently? Um, and I think if, if the communication and engagement plans are, are good, we will take farmers on the journey to understand where they need to change. Um, but we also have some amazing farmers who are doing such a good job, um, and we need to we need to highlight them um, and show what what's possible and, and give them the support to to keep on going, even when you know they're faced with all sorts of adversity, whether it's um, whether obviously the you know coming off the drought, which has been really tough for some people, and throwing in COVID in there and you know, and, and uncertain um, global global times as well. Uh, Karen, I'm just going to make the most of this opportunity. I know we're going to talk to you multiple times, but uh, I have the wonderful privilege of talking to the beautiful Lindy Nelson tomorrow on the show, of which I know you know. And uh, I hate, 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 hate playing the woman card. But I do actually want to ask you, because I know your background and how you've come from through this to this particular position, um, and, and it's just one worth celebrating. Could you please give one word of advice to women that, you know, went, oh, shit, I fell for a farmer. Right, now what? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that their life is not over and there's a wealth <laughs> of opportunity to be involved and dig in. Absolutely. Well, I'm a case in point for that. So, you know, with a resource management background, grew up in town, married a farmer, um, and then when it got pretty busy on the farm with kids um, and farms sort of started going along to various, um, you know, agricultural meetings um, with regional council processes and stuff and started to sort of embrace that. And I know a number of women that married into farming are doing the same. So just, um, you know, believe in yourself and, you um, you know, you, you are adding value. Someone told to me recently that they joined Feds and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And she said, Karen, I, I wanted to join a couple of years ago, but I felt that I didn't sort of walk, talk or smell like a farmer. Um, so I was really reluctant to join. So we want, um, I want, you know, women out there to know that there's, n- there's no particular way to, to dress or smell as it, um, like you've come out of the yard, perhaps. Um, we need all the skills, uh, the skill sets that we can there is, there's, you know, there's a wave or a deluge of things coming at us. Um, we want to broaden, broaden our skills and, and assist our men. Um, you know, they can't, they can't be across everything. Uh, the partnership is certainly the way forward, and a lot of those skills and, and that um, um, confidence to get involved has come through from my um, exposure to Agri Women's Development Trust and their Escalator Program. So. I highly recommend, you know, connecting through the trust and seeing what they can do for you and then you can pay forward to the um, the ag industry. 
Oh, what a beautiful way to end it. Thank you so much. I'll let you go and have your bubbles with Jacinda, uh, Karen, and carry on your evening. I really appreciate you stepping out to talk to us tonight on Serious Country. And this is the first and will not be the last, I know. Uh, that's Karen Williams, our new Vice President for Federated Farmers. This is Serious Country.